This is a 2022 Jeep Compass, a small off-road capable SUV that looks like a mini Grand Cherokee. But is it a compelling choice in the ultra-competitive subcompact SUV segment? Let's find out. The Compass first came out back in 2007, and back then it was a very quirky and odd-looking SUV. Finally, for 2018, Jeep came out with an all-new model. That meant that it was an all-new SUV from the ground up. New chassis, new powertrain, new design, new technology added to the Compass. For 2022, it's getting a mid-cycle update with new technology and a little facelift to the front. Who is it competing against? Well, on the one hand, we have the Subaru Crosstrek and the Ford Bronco Sport, two kind of off-road capable SUVs. And on the other hand, we have the rest of the subcompact SUV segment, like the Toyota Corolla Cross and the Kia Seltos. The Compass is meant for those who want to head outdoors during the weekend, but don't want to drive a full-size SUV. I said earlier that the Compass borrowed some cues from the Grand Cherokee, and the Grand Cherokee was a success in every way. It not only was a very popular model within its segment, it also stood out in terms of design. And over the years, it just got very few mid-cycle updates because it was just such a good looking SUV. Now, the fact that the Compass borrows some lines from its bigger brother, it's actually a pretty good thing. Let's talk about why here at the front. First, you have this seven slot grille. That's a signature element for any Jeep. But in the case of the Compass, this is a non-functional grille. This is all covered in plastic and it's just a styling feature really for the Compass. The functional element is down here and then you have some pretty good looking headlights with uh, daytime running lights here at the top and very slick character lines in the hood. Because this is the high altitude trim, you're gonna see a lot of black details around the profile. So the A pillar is all black, really the entire roof is all black and you see a lot of black details around the windows. Moving over to the rear, the taillights can like wrap around the corners and then you see a 4x4 badge. That 4x4 badge is actually pretty funny because this is an all-wheel drive SUV. We'll talk more about that later. But overall, I think the Compass stands out in its design. It's a very good looking SUV and that's something you don't see in the subcompact SUV segment. The interior is one of the Compass' strongest points, and I want to spend some time talking about the technology that's in it, and that starts here with the infotainment screen. Besides having a pretty large screen, you also have the Uconnect system that is super easy to use and has pretty nice resolution, nice graphics, easy to get around. Also, you have digital instrument cluster right here in front of me. And in terms of materials, it's actually pretty good. Wherever you touch, whether it's up here in the dashboard or in the lower part of the dashboard or the door panels or the armrest, you have very soft materials. So for a subcompact SUV, that's pretty good. And in terms of design, I want to call out how the integrated air vents, you know, they're kind of like hidden. So it looks pretty slick. And that's something we don't really see in the segment. Another thing we don't see in the segment is the panoramic moonroof that we have in this SUV. In terms of interior space, there is enough for those sitting in the back seat. Leg room is okay, headroom is pretty good, and cargo capacity is fine for the segment. So overall, I think the Compass does a pretty good job inside in terms of technology, materials, and interior space. When buying a Compass, please make sure you know that it goes from zero to 60 in 10.5 seconds. That is super slow, so merging on the freeway will take a little bit of time. It does have a pretty good engine, a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine with four cylinders that delivers 177 horsepower and 172 pound-feet of torque with a nine-speed transmission. Those are actually not bad numbers, but the Compass is just a heavy subcompact SUV. In terms of fuel economy, it's also pretty mediocre, delivering 22 miles per gallon in the city and 30 on the highway. Now, I did mention that I wanted to talk more about that 4x4 badge in the rear. This is an all-wheel drive only SUV. Even though it has a 4x4 badge, there is no transfer case or there is no low gear in this Compass. There is a Trailhawk model that delivers a little bit more off-road capability, like bigger off-road tires and uh, it has a one inch lift and a crawl ratio too, but it certainly does not have a transfer case. So in terms of performance really, both off-road and on-road, the Compass has more room for improvement. In terms of safety, the Compass is just okay. 
the IIHS gave it good scores overall, and the NHTSA gave it 4 out of 5 stars. It's decent. In terms of active safety technology, it has actually a pretty long list of standard equipment, like automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, and blind spot monitoring. There's also some other technologies that you can pay extra for, like adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which will follow the car in front of you all the time when you're on the freeway. So, safety-wise, it's decent, it's pretty okay. Let's talk about pricing. The Compass is a rather expensive SUV, and even though prices start at around $28,000, this trim next to me is almost $10,000 more, so it gets pretty expensive pretty quickly. Compare that to other trims, high trims of the Crosstrek or the Corolla Cross, and it's actually a pretty expensive SUV within its segment. When you compare that to the Ford Bronco Sport, it's more or less in line, but still, overall, the Compass is just way more expensive. The one thing you should know about the Jeep Compass is this. Yes, it's a very good looking SUV and it has pretty good technology, but if performance, fuel economy, safety, and value are important, then the Compass is not for you. To see our vehicle rankings and complete buyer's guide, visit motortrend.com cars.